Uh, so have you messed with this open sound meter? Um, yeah. like a little bit. That's just the Mac one, right? Or no, hold on. That's fuzz measure. Uh, yeah, they, I don't know they, if I have. So they have a free version that works on PC, Mac. I think that may, maybe maybe Linux too. Hmm. I'm not sure. That's cool. But um, it's pretty cool. Let me just kind of show you what the, the screen looks like. Um, looks like this. And so you can set, you know, three different things here: spectrum, magnitude, phase, impulse, step, coherence. Mm. Right? I'm not going to go into what every one of these things does. Why is it moving? What's that? Is this a video? What's that? Oh, it's is measuring. It right now. This is right now. What is? Oh. What, let's see what, what it's. Uh, Look at your voice. It's 125 to about. I don't know. Mike, let's see if I can use my uh, Rodecaster Pro stereo. You see how it smooth like that doing the wave. You see how smooth that was? That was crazy, yeah. right? So yeah, this is a what they call dual FFT. And correct me if uh, I'm 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 still learning this stuff. Um, where it uses the microphone, what the microphone captures, and then it uses a reference signal. So if you generate a tone from here, so I can go here and generate pink noise, white noise, sign. Uh, like a, a sine tone, sine sweep, M noise. What I don't know why they call it music noise. Maybe it's a different thing because uh, M noise requires 96K mm. uh, bursts. Okay, anyway, so you generate the tone here, and then it compares what is coming in from the mic to the generated tone that it's getting. And it's mm -hmm. the cool thing about this is that you can <clears throat> go here to impulse, which I can't do right now, I guess. Let's see, normalize. That's uh, from a previous previous thing that I was doing. So you can see the live phase tra phase trace, right? So let's see a previous one. So I can see live phase, um, live impulse response, which you know you can get the phase and the impulse response from REW, but you can't see it in real time, right? And that the craziest thing is when you can see it happen in real time and listen with your ears, right? And actually hear what is happening. So when stuff is out of phase, what does that sound like? You know, when it's perfectly time aligned, what do what do uh, bursts sound like? Like a uh, impulse. Mm -hmm. You can play that, and like, does it sound like tick 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 tick? -tick? And then when you align them, it's like tick, one, right? So it's kind of cool to be able to see and hear th things at the same time. So, like we always say, you know, the measurements do correlate with what you hear. Right, they're not. It's not one thing and another thing. It's just uh, audio is is intangible. You can't really you can't see it. So it, it helps to see these graphs to be able to visualize what is actually happening. See, you like to visualize too. Yours just doesn't look like this. Yeah. <laughs> I bet if I plotted out the the location, it correspond to where your fingers are. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's uh, literally that's all. That's that was just me. I was just like, man, I must look, look stupid. Let me videotape this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Being creative is a different thing, right? When you're being creative, you're you're the one who's creating. You're there's no reference, right? Um, so yeah, dual FFT, live impulse, and live phase trace, which is really cool. You know, phase is something that's kind of hard to, for me to understand. Mm. You know, it's one of those concepts, just not. It's not that easy to grasp, but to actually see, you know, when a uh, bass aligns, right? When you, when you align the bass, what does it sound like? When you align the high frequencies, what does that sound like? Phase wise, right? I'm talking about phase. And I was talking to, uh, uh, Jacob, Aaron, you know, Jacob from jail. Oh, uh, um, yeah. is that the dude I emailed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jay. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking about, was it him or was it somebody else? I talked to a lot of people. I think it was him, but, um, mm, it might've been somebody else actually. Yeah. I, I, I know you're talking about. But, I, uh, I talked to him with the, about the max when I was trying to use that for some. Amplifiers. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might've been talking to somebody else actually about this phase thing that I'm about to talk about. Maybe but Nick. No, this is not somebody from JL. Oh, okay. It was somebody else. I talked to a ton of people when I'm learning something. I try to talk to a bunch of people who 
are smarter than me and know more and have more experience. And, you know, they'll let me know if I'm doing something real, real dumb. But um, the question was like, what happens when you align the phase in the higher frequencies? Right? We already know like base, you're supposed to align, phase align the base so that, you know, you're not getting cancellation. But can you hear, can you hear the uh, phase alignment in the high frequencies? What's it, what's been your experience, Aaron? It just depends. Like if you're messing with tones and pink noise and, and you're adjusting it on the fly, then you can hear it, but it can also do this thing where it can just walk itself out of phase and then just, it basically just keeps coming right back around. Like within a millisecond, depending on what frequency you're at, you can have yeah. three different points, you know, where it's in phase, a little bit out of phase, completely out phase. And then in phase, a little bit, completely out of phase. In phase, yeah. you know, you can just walk it in that circle. Um, and the, the so tricky just, thing yeah, is it just kind of depends. It's like you can just move a little bit and like, okay, now now that's incorrect. Yeah, all, yeah, all you got to do is be like, or, uh, or be tired uh, and just. Yeah, yep. Yeah. But so here's what I noticed, though, because uh, I have a, <laughs> he's still, he's he's asleep. He's asleep. <laughs> I'm committed to my art. All right, sorry. So, so uh, on my computer here, I have it set up. So I've made my own room correction type of thing, my own mm -hmm. calibration where I set the delays, I set the phase, I do everything. I'm not relying on like any particular room correction to do it. I'm, I have to manually do everything. Mm. Right. Sean has seen it. It looks crazy, right? Yeah. No, it's just pretty ridiculous. Yeah. It's just a bunch of nodes and nodes. No. Yeah. Nodes. Yeah. yeah. Connecting to each other, right? No. Not related to the noid from Domino's fame. Noid. Yeah. I can, sh I can show you. It looks like this. This is my room correction right now here in the studio with 7.1.4. It looks like, looks like that. Like that's that's my room correction. <laughs> Look at that! Holy cow. It's like spaghetti. It's you know, so you know, I have my crossovers. I have the delays for all speakers that need to be applied. So it's they're all delayed to account for the LFE, the sub, yeah. which is the slowest. And then I have individual delays for each speaker, and then I have um, just a phase rotation for each speaker also. Mm. And then I could add, I could add like a, I could band bandwidth limit this so i can rotate the phase in a certain area only oh yeah cool so uh yeah that's how that looks so anyway um i was able to play with aligning time aligning all right so time alignment and phase alignment is different right you can time align something and it can be phase aligned at a certain point and then go out of phase mm -hmm. not be in phase at a different point mm -hmm. and so the question to me was what happens in the higher frequencies if they're not phase aligned. Does it matter? And when people talk about phase for speakers, they're talking about like the phase alignment on the speaker itself. I don't know that that's as noticeable as I'm listening to two speakers that are right in front of me. I can, I can reach out and touch them. Mm -hmm. And then I can rotate the phase in the higher frequencies and make them kind of in phase and out of phase. And what it seems to do, you know, perceptually is it moves the, the imaging like forward and back sometimes like out of, like sometimes it can move it left and right a little bit they'll move it left and right but remember i'm not changing the 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 timing so changing the timing offset will move it from one speaker to the other right if you change the the delay so that uh the speaker on the left has a signal first and then there's a delay on the second it moves your perception to like the sounds coming from the left mm -hmm. right and then as you get them you know, directly uh, in the center, you get the time alignment perfect. The, the object is in the center. But then the phase rotation is not timing offset. It's it's changing the phase relationship between the two speakers. And what it sounds like it's doing is it's it's like moving the image in and out, like forward and backwards. Have you noticed that in, yeah. in car audio tuning? It's, it's kind of a cool thing. Like when it's, when you have them phase aligned, that thing like comes... Like it sounds like it's like right, like you could like yeah. I could reach out and touch it. Yeah, locked in. Yeah, it's locked in. So that's something that's real cool. And I think my experiment was to try to see what Dirac is doing, and I think it does a really good job of phase aligning in those higher frequencies. Yeah, and that's something that the others don't do. So, um, that's that. That's that's part of <laughs> my notes here. But then, of course, base alignment we've talked about and. 
I think most people know that you should align your main speakers to your sub. Over. And it's almost like that, that base area, it's less important that they're time aligned, more important that they're phase aligned. Mm. Right? Like whether the, the base hits at the exact same time as like the other frequencies, of course, yeah, you want to try to get that close, as close as possible, right? But if it means that they're out of phase and canceling each other, that means that you don't hear the bass. Mm-hmm. I, w- I would rather hear some bass, you know, with it like like a, a millis like like a point zero something milliseconds off, but the phase is aligned. I'd rather have that. Yeah, you're not going to notice that with the subwoofer because the wavelengths are way too long for that to matter. Make sure to check out our audio only version of the podcast at anchor.fm forward slash daily hi fi or just go to your favorite podcasting service and search for Daily Hi-Fi.